Hello, this is uh, Fernando Gomez Sancha, and uh, this is a new case of a SULEP uh, operation in a patient with a relatively small prostate, as you can see, with uh, an elevated bladder and neck with a you know incipient middle lobe. And uh, I think it's an interesting case that shows how enucleation can be very fast. I think. The enucleation time in this case was around 10 minutes or something like that. So I wanted to show you how, you know, the unblock technique allows you to, to do very fast procedures. And in this case, uh, I'm using the uh, Revolix HTL uh, laser from, from Lisa Laser. And uh, this is the marking of, of the white line. You know, in the smaller prostates, um, often there's not much uh, growth, you see. So we are maybe a little bit more inside than, than, than I would want to be for, for the white line. Here I was asking my colleagues to stop the green light on, on the tip because it's not uh, necessary. So as we mark the line a little bit, you know, maybe one or two millimeters inside, from what we wanted, you, we know that we have a little margin of, of uh, flexibility, you know, we can get uh, probably closer to the mucosa. This is the entry into the plane. Sometimes the smaller prostates have much worse planes, so... Uh, uh, well, it's more fibrous and not so, not so nice. Here I'm going to deepen a little bit this, this, this white line and trying to start uh, a little bit the access to the lateral plane. Normally when I do this, I have already rotated the fiber to the 12 o'clock position, but in this case, it looked very easy to, to start this initial part uh, with the fiber at six o'clock. What I don't like is to keep moving the fiber, you know, constantly moving, rotating the scope and the camera. You see here now I'm coming to towards uh, 12 like that, trying to incise a little bit deeper, you know, the, the white line, even cutting somewhat into the adenoma because that will give me the axis I need to start developing the lateral plane. Uh, here you can see that the, the instruments uh, get some wear and tear, you know, when you when you do a lot of surgery, uh, with all these repetitive esterilization processes and like that, the endoscopic instruments suffer a little bit. You can see that the lens is a little bit damaged. Still relatively good visibility, but uh, yeah, when you work a lot, uh, <laughs> you start seeing this. And and then, of course, uh, when, when the visibility is not very good, you have to start thinking about uh, repairing or re you know refreshing the, the instruments. But here we are. You see that the steps of uh, the unblock technique don't change very much. Uh, so we try to open the access initially by deepening the white line. Then we, we have better access. You can go and look for the lateral plane. And uh, I have to say that despite I like very much the effect of Holmium for the ability to dissect the plane, open the plane, uh, you know, following the anatomical um, plane. I enjoy a lot the ability of this laser to cut and the, f the speed, you see, the speed that it gives you because it's very efficient when you want to cut. So if you know your way in the nucleation, if you can recognize the planes and if you can uh, travel, you know, around the line of dissection. Uh, it is a very, very fast uh, laser to use. You can see that the quality of hemostasis is really, really good, which means that you can progress fast um, like this. And uh, when you have long lists of, of patients, it is it is a plus, you know, to have a laser that provides this uh, speed of cutting. Maybe, as I said, we lose a little bit in the in uh, when we compare this to Holmium in the sense that 
Holmium helps you more to, to stay in the proper plane. But, uh, you know, my heart is a little bit, um, how do you say, I, you can love two, two persons at the same time, uh, the same way you can love uh, different aspects of uh, different lasers. And, and I have to say the hemostasis and the, 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 the cutting properties of this laser are, are really uh, nice. No? Here, for example, I'm trying to correct a little bit the plane, trying to find out if that deeper plane is better. And as always, I think, and I think especially for this kind of laser, uh, respecting the lines of dissection is very important because you might not be able to see the, 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 the planes to distinguish, you know, exactly or, or, or the beauty of, of the plane. But, uh, of course, um, the line will orient you a, a lot. Now, once you find the desired depth, it's not so difficult to stay in the line by looking at the characteristics of the plane, uh, of the capsule and the adenoma. Uh, so here, again, going around, trying to follow the line, trying to follow in the, in the nice depth, and of course, enjoying the speed of the cutting and the quality of, 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 of hemostasis. I think this end block technique is, is fantastic for any kind of, of energy you use, even for bipolar. So if you're going to do bipolar nucleation, you can uh, easily follow the same steps um, using your you know bipolar probe. And here you can see how following these lines and trying to connect the dots, I mean, not being so afraid of exploring if the depth of, of the procedure is, is uh, correct or not. Because here you can see there's some little plane developing lower than we were dissecting. So you, you shouldn't be afraid to, to explore if that, uh, is a more proper plane, or if we're getting too too deep, trying, of course, to play with the working distance, to try to have a soft effect, and also try to modulate the speed of your movement so that you are at the same time efficient and safe. So here you see this is the development of the posterior plane, uh, but taking uh, into consideration where we're coming from. You see, trying to follow the line. In this case, you can see that the plane is developing very nicely there, and we're following a very, very good plane. So there it is. Huh? The lines help. Sometimes you get reassurance from what you're seeing. And... Uh, As you can see, this laser allows to do very fast uh, dissection with excellent, excellent hemostasis. And uh, that's uh, again the posterior plane. Of course, I use the same principles, trying to fire more on the edge of the adenoma. You see, because now the capsule is starting to be perpendicular to the fiber. so. If you fire against the capsule, you're going to make a hole. So you have to fire on the edge of the adenoma uh, to try to uh, progress safely without uh, perforating, without deepening into the into the capsule. Let's see, the lines uh, do not keep themselves. Eh? It has to be you that tries to connect the lines, the posterior line with the lateral line with the anterior line and try to keep uh, a good connection between the lines. That's now reaching the bladder neck area. You see that despite being a very fibrous muscular tissue, the laser cuts through it like if it was, you know, butter or something. Um, 
and the case is uh, now nearly finished. Huh? There's only a little bit of six o'clock uh, attachment. There it is. Uh, we saw at the beginning that the UOs were not so close, huh? so we can be quite uh, happy with the fact that uh, they're not at risk in this case. And, you know, just follow the lines and do movements that go from side to side, very wide movements. And uh, you see, there's... That's it. Huh? Uh, this is now um, 11 minutes since we started the, the case. So it's really, really fast to do these uh, relatively small prostates with minimal uh, traction, minimal damage, minimal effort, and uh, excellent hemostasis, minimal blood loss. We take the catheter out uh, the following morning, so there it is. Uh, that's the that's the fossa, and this is a perfectly preserved sphincter mucosa. So a little bit of hemostasis, and we will move on to the morselation. Uh, I I I was not convinced of the you know classic continuous wave uh, thulin lasers, but uh, I think both uh, thulin fiber laser and this uh, uh, solid state uh, pulsed thulin laser uh, have features that make them very interesting. I think maybe learning might be a little bit more difficult, but because of this, you know, idea that the plane doesn't develop so nicely and you can cut very easily into the into the capsule or into the adenoma, losing the plane. But uh, it's very interesting, as you can see, uh, this is a HOLEP uh, procedure that takes uh, less than 15 minutes. Uh, so it, it allows us to be very fast uh, and to have excellent hemostasis. The hemostasis, I think it's better than, than, than the one we get with Holmium, even with pulse modulated Holmium. So that's it. I thought it was an interesting case to show because of the speed of the dissection and the cutting and the and uh, also to stress that Holep is also appropriate for smaller glands. Huh? So I don't know what uh, you know a TORP could add to this patient in comparison to what we have just done. You know, we did a complete removal of the adenoma. In a very short time, without bleeding, the catheter will come out uh, fast. So thank you for your attention.